So, welcome to my presentation about the MBS FileMaker plugin. We are MonkeyPred Software, we are making a plugin for now um, over for 18 years already. It's a long journey, and on the way, we got 7,500 functions currently, and a few more uh, every, every week. 350 new last year, over 300 already this year, so we are adding more and more because people ask for more functions. And if you have a week of holiday, please check out our 600 example databases. So maybe there is something in there you can just copy to your solution to yeah, add a feature. The MBS plugin comes as one plugin file. One of the decisions I made 18 years ago to just put everything in one file so you don't need to manage 20 different plugins. And only the used parts are actually loaded and active. So even if the plugin is now, I think, 70 megabytes, only one megabyte is used if you if you just load it. So it doesn't, doesn't fill your memory. It's easy to install and update because it's just one file and you can install it by script step if needed. We have an example database for that to help you to check if the plugin is old and install a new version. We support several FileMaker versions from 7 to 21. So whatever FileMaker you have, we have a plugin for it. So recently we added support for the latest version. I always need to fix a few little things. I have to discover what Claire's changed and update the plugin. Then you can use the plugin in FileMaker Pro on Mac and Windows. You can use it on the server. And on the server, you can use it for perform script on server, for script, for scheduled scripts, uh, for data API and web direct. Just make sure you put the plugin in all three plugins folder on the server and you activate the plugins in the admin console. The plugin works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And nowadays, uh, I think 60% of our customers use Linux. That's the majority. Uh, you can use the plugin on iOS if you use the FileMaker iOS SDK to make yourself a branded version of FileMaker Go with your own name, your own icon, and you can embed the plugin there. So you can use your iOS SDK app to use your solution on iPhone, iPad, macOS, and Vision Pro if you like. And for FileMaker Go, you need to use Perform Script on Server to do whatever you like to do on the server side of the plugin. The MBS plugin has one central function. That's a decision from 18 years ago, where we started with 50 functions. We didn't want to put all 50 functions in the calculation dialog, which is a good decision because I tested it. If you put 7,000 functions there, the dialog takes 10 minutes to open. Doesn't work. The first parameter is a function name, which can come from a calculation, a field, or whatever you like to do. Some people put the function names in a pop-up, to pick for the user and then they know which function to use for some image effects, for example. If you got an error, please check the isError function, which tells you whether the last call to the MBS plugin on the same script got an error. You should not check for the prefix, uh, uh, better use isError. And we have this me mechanism with uh, here clear error, head error, and uh, error log. So the plugin can make a log about all the MBS plugin calls that failed in a script. So on the end of the script, you can check if everything worked or you like to make a record in your error handling uh, log file. We use reference parameters. So we have a lot of functions to return your number and then you pass this number to the next function to refer to the same object. Mm -hmm. It's a concept you need to use to get used to, but we have over 80 different types of such objects like JSON, XML, or DynaPDF environment for making a PDF. Maintenance. Most of my work nowadays is maintenance. Just keep the thing running. I regularly update for new FileMaker versions. Usually I uh, take part in the beta testing so I can try the new functions before you, the normal audience. And uh, I can fix the plugin to be sure that when the release from FileMaker is coming, the current plugin already works well. 
Then I added uh, ARM version for Linux. So I was one of the first plugins to do an ARM version. So we have one plugin file for all Ubuntu versions, so, which is a good thing. So you don't need to care which Ubuntu version you use. 18, 20, 22, 24, it doesn't matter, the plugin runs everywhere. And we regularly update the libraries. We have a lot of commercial and open source libraries and I have to just recompile things every few months with a new version so I get the latest bug fixes and maybe some new features. Then we have functions uh, for PDF. With DynaPDF we have a powerful commercial library to do all the PDF stuff. It's an extra license you need and uh, it brings you a ton of features like merging PDFs or splitting PDFs and it got recently um, PDF-A support in version 4 and PDF-UA uh, version 1. If you have a client who needs PDFs to be saved in a specific PDF version, then a PDF can do the conversion. For you, it's it's just telling Dana PDF loads this PDF output as this format, done. But on the back end, it's a lot of work. Uh, you can add JavaScript actions to a PDF file, like you can uh, have a calculation in the PDF file, which is then run in Acrobat Reader when you do something. Like you can have two text fields where the user can enter a number and you can have a calculation to calculate the sum. You may have seen that before that you have forms in as PDF files which automatically calculate things. Uh, we can add PDF attachments to a PDF. So PDF can contain other files like PDF files and we can have buttons with an action to open this second PDF file. We can also have submit and reset buttons for forms. So you can have a PDF with uh, form fields and a button so the user can fill the PDF. Click a button and Acrobat Reader will upload the PDF file to, to your URL. So we have a sample PHP script to receive the file and then you can store it in the database. And we have style text conversion. So you can have style text in your FileMaker fields and put this text into our PDF file. Then we got uh, a parser interface where you can um, do a lot of things with the content of a page. Like you can extract the text of a page, you can do search and replace. So you can replace placeholders with the text you want. You can also query the coordinates for the text you found. So you can ask where is a certain text on the page. You can delete text in a rectangle. So if you say there's some text in the PDF, I want to retract that, I want to remove it, we can do that. Um, when you place new text, you can decide on an alternative font if the font used for the original text is not available. And you can delete images. Like if you want to get a PDF and you want to remove the pictures, um, then do something with them. Maybe place a new picture. We have uh, Zugfeld functions, or in French, Factor X, uh, where we uh, have functions for receiving invoice. So we have the possibility to read the XML from the PDF file. With, and then you can use our XML functions to uh, process the XML and get all the values from the invoice into your fields. Also, we can send an invoice. So the plugin can uh, use XML functions to build the XML file and then attach it to the PDF and we can convert to PDF A and so we can make uh, these electronic invoices uh, which are introduced in Germany soon. So we all need to have it, otherwise your solution is outdated. And we have a couple of example projects for this. So it can be done with a lot of copy and paste if you use our scripts. Then uh, I have examples for here layouting. So if you need to create a PDF from scratch with Dyna PDF, you can do those. You can place pictures, you can have text going around the pictures. Like you see, we have defined these boxes here. And then we tell Dyna PDF, please output the text from one box to the next box, to the next box, to the next box, to the next page. So some companies do their PDF uh, leaflets automatically, like if you have um, real estate business where you sell houses, 
you may want to automatically generate PDFs for every building and uh, have a nice layout and just output thousands of PDFs. Then we have overlay windows. This allows you to have a window without the usual uh, widgets and a transparent picture as a, as a content. You can place it anywhere you like. You can use mouse triggers to know when the user clicked on it or moved the mouse over it. Uh, you can position it on the screen uh, based on a FileMaker window or controls or just with coordinates anywhere you like. It's fantastic for splash screens, for a little help, um, displays, navigation, um, guiding lines, whatever you like. And uh, you can use it as a target for drag and drop, like you can have a little widget floating on the screen, the user can drop files on it, and these files appear in FileMaker. Like you get a script triggered to decide what to do with the object. And you can use a web view as a content. So with the latest version you can load a HTML page into the overlay and use it to show whatever content you like. Like this little page here and there's a test button in the example and if you click it some JavaScript runs and changes the label. And you can show animated GIFs if you like or a movie, whatever. Then we have a lot of web viewer functions, like you can run JavaScript asynchronously or synchronously. So you can just query something on the page and get back the result directly. We can print to PDF on Mac and Windows with a lot of print parameters, so you can generate PDFs from web content. You can also generate a picture of the web page and save that. Uh, you can fill form fields if you like and submit the form. And on Mac we have the download delegates, so we can track downloads on the um, web viewer and catch the file and give you the path where it was downloaded to and you can show a progress bar if you want. And you can query cookies, so you can use the web viewer to show a login page, then get the cookie and use our curl functions to download a file for example. Then we have JSON functions. You may have seen FileMaker has a few JSON functions, we have over 90 of them, and our uh, functions are made for performance. They are made to work on huge JSONs. We have also JSON to XML conversion in both directions, which can be useful. We also can uh, split a JSON into our list and back, which can help you if you have JSONs with, like, let's say, a million entries, and you want to um, work on them with, with performance. And then we have JSON uh, pass, JSON query, and JSON search and replace. So you can find things in a JSON and uh, replace it, or you can just make queries like here. Find me in the people array everyone above 26, give me their name and city, uh, and sort it by the name. Like you can do queries against JSON. Very useful if you use uh, web APIs and you need to process the results. Then we also have different patch functions, so we can tell you the difference between two JSONs and also apply a patch to uh, one of them, so you get the other. And we got a JSON merge function, which can be very helpful if you just have um, two versions of a JSON structure and you like to update the one with the values from the other. Then we have uh, JSON functions for create, uh, update and delete record. So um, you can do your record creation, updating and deletion using JSON to define the content of the record. For example, with insert record you pass in a JSON, um, a, a field for every uh, field in the, in the table and values and the plugin will automatically add that and we even detect if a value is a time or date and then uh, convert it internally. We can also do uh, updates uh, for one record and for several records. So you can well, use a JSON to update your record. We even got insert or update. So if you get an um, uh, answer from a web service and you just want to push it into your table, uh, we can see if the, if the primary key already exists and then update the record, otherwise we create a new one. Also, you can delete records uh, using JSON, which can be handy sometimes. 
Then we have a lot of curl functions. Curl is a library to do up and downloads, web transfers, FTP, email. And we have functions to run things in the background, which can be very useful because your user doesn't need to wait for a download to finish. We got trigger scripts uh, for finished, failed, or success. Success. So you can just start a download or upload in the background, and then later a script is triggered when it's finished. We can uh, help you process relative URLs, like if you got, you know, a URL on a web page, which goes into a subfolder to a document, and you can take the absolute URL and then apply the relative one and get a new absolute to download the next page. We also got WebSocket support in our curl functions. So if you need to connect to our WebSocket server, um, send some data, receive some data, you can do that with our plugin. Also, we got some functions for MQTT. So if you uh, use some home automation using MQTT, you can uh, control it from FileMaker. Then uh, there's a Canadian company called Fidget Inc., which makes a lot of little devices which you can use in FileMaker. So if you need a sensor for humidity or temperature or whatever, you can do that in FileMaker, get the values, uh, get a script triggered if something changes. So you can react to it, can log data, you can build your own weather station if you want like. Uh, there are analog and digital input outputs, so you can uh, connect relays to maybe switch your garage door on and off. Um, you can control motors directly and uh, this is available for Mac and Windows. So if you need to automate your home with FileMaker, you can do that. Then we have a lot of functions for MongoDB. You can of course connect to it, you can insert records, update records, you can move containers there, you can work with time and date, timestamps. Um, you get a lot of options for encryption of the connection, so you can have a secure connection. You get logging, so you can figure out what's going wrong if something doesn't work. And you have the chance to connect to MongoDB on your client's MongoDB server. So if they have a MongoDB and you need to get us or send some data, you can do that with a plugin. Then we have functions for Excel files. So if you have a need to read and write Excel documents, you can use the LibXL library with our plugin. If you need anything more than what FileMaker offers, like you want to define what's on the column name, you need a plugin for that. So uh, you can uh, control form fields in Excel. We can convert style text to and from Excel. So users can put text with styles in a field and we can put that in the Excel. So uh, we can make queries with SQL in the FileMaker database, get some records, put them in a matrix object, and then send this directly to the Excel document. So you can use plugin calls to move thousands of values in one call from your table to the Excel document. And you can use conditional formatting, so you can have your columns defined to um, make a value red if it's negative, for example. Uh, this requires an additional LibXL license, which you can order on our website. Then uh, Microsoft uh, started to deliver a little bit PDF support in Windows 10. We can use that to um, load a PDF file from a container or file, and then we can render pages, uh, create the page count and the sizes. And this can be very helpful if you want to get a PDF preview without Dyna PDF here. Otherwise, we have PDF kit functions on Mac and iOS as well as Dyna PDF to get the same cross-platform. <coughs> but since Microsoft provides a little bit PDF support, we also get the preview control, which allows you to show a PDF on Windows. And I mm -hmm. also made a version of the preview control for MacOS, so we can also show a PDF there. And you have a possibility to show a PDF on both platforms without the user being able to save the PDF. Uh, you know, there's no toolbar to save a PDF, print it. You don't need a web viewer for this, and you don't need a Adobe Reader. There's no plugin involved from, um, from a PDF viewer. So you can show a PDF to the user without them um, making a copy. 
And on macOS, it can also show other file types like an Excel document or a Word file because it's a quick look preview control. Then uh, we have functions for list dialogues. Like whenever you need a picker for someone to pick a few things from a list, you can show such a dialogue. And in the last year, we added checkboxes. So you can have a long list of things. People can use checkboxes to mark which ones they like. There's a search box so people can search for items. And you can customize the dialog a little bit. For example, you can have several columns if you like. Uh, and next we have Python functions. Some people love Python and they can load a Python library into FileMaker. So you can have several Python installations on your computer. You tell the plugin which you want to load. Then you can create an environment for Python. So every environment has their own variables. You can have several environments. You can run a script within an environment. You can evaluate an expression, like if you want to have the user enter something and perform a calculation. Uh, you can work with the global variables, get them, set them via script. You can call back from Python to FileMaker with evaluate or execute SQL to move data over. For Mac and Windows, uh, and Linux, and Linux. Not on iOS because you can't get Python to iOS, as far as I know. Then uh, we got a nice uh, use for our graphics magic functions to have this example to show you a progress in a portal. So we use a calculation or a script to generate this graphics based on the text in a field. So if you have a need for progress by in a portal, please check out this example. <coughs> then we got the tidy library. This is an open source library to perform cleanup of XML and HTML. So we got an XML tidy function, which allows you to pass in some XML with maybe some errors, like someone made a typo, and it can fix it. And uh, same, it can um, pass HTML and clean up the HTML. And on top of that, we got an HTML to JSON function, which allows you to have a structured JSON, which then you can use with a JSON parse function to run queries against. Maybe easier than uh, working with, uh, with HTML directly. Um, then people like to know how big the tables are. So we got a statistic functions where the plugin goes over table, uh, looks at all records and figures out how many text fields text values are there, how many container values, how many dates, how much is the total text length, how big is the total size of all containers, and then how big is the whole table, without the indexes, of course, and some overhead from class. Uh, we also got a function to check this for field statistics, so you have one field in a table you like to get the size of, or you may want to get the size of a record, so this function actually is three functions. So it may help you to know which table is as big. Um, yeah, you can pick a JSON so you can uh, automatically uh, look up the values. Um, <coughs> yeah. Then we have functions to automate printing on iOS. Like if you use the iOS SDK to make your own app, you can use a plugin to pick a printer. You can show the printer dialog or just pick one uh, in code. You can use the print function to print with or without dialog. And this is great for a point of sales system where you generate a PDF on the device and send it to the printer automatically. Uh, like you have someone with an iPad collecting uh, an order and then a print button and it can send the PDF to the next printer. Then we got a useful function to rectify a picture. So, uh, we have this document scan function already, where you can use your iOS device to scan a document on a, by taking a picture and then it rectifies. And now we have this function without, uh, yeah, without taking the picture. So if you have a picture where you know there is a document, you can use this function to well, stretch it so it looks better. And then you can do your OCR or whatever you like to do. Um, 
Then we have uh, a few smaller things which didn't uh, get their own slides, like for example WebP support for graphics magic. So if you need to read a graphics a picture file uh, with WebP format or you need to create one to upload to your uh, website, you can do that with a plugin. Then we got functions for the photo picker, so you can ask the user for picture from their picture library on Mac and iOS without getting a dialog about permissions. Then if you have files in iCloud or Dropbox or similar services, you can ask their status. So you know whether the file is already downloaded or if you want to start the download or if you want to uh, delete the local copy. And we have functions to convert uh, from an XML object, from a JSON object or matrix to HTML to display the content in a web viewer. And we got a useful identify data function where you can pass some data or pass a file and then we can tell you what's probably in the file. Like if you get a picture file without a file extension and you may want to know whether it's maybe an exe file actually, uh, so you don't uh, spread uh, a virus or malware into your database. Um, so you can filter some things by content and this has been very useful. And if you ever need to make a little um, solution to raffle something, you can uh, shuffle a list to randomize the order of the items. Then we have a lot of nice enhancements to the FileMaker script workspace. There's a list of 40 nice things you can read on our website about all the nice things the plugin does to you. And we got a few new things for you. So, for example, you can have a comment in a script uh, using go to or script double colon and then the plugin allows you to click on a little widget to jump to the line or jump to the other script. You can also copy variable and field values in the debugger. Like if you go with the mouse over the, the field name or the, the variable name, make a right click on a Mac and, and you can get the context menu and there you can copy the value. You can declare variables in a comment. So our variable check can look for the, yeah, for whether you define the variable and uh, to not get an alert for variable defined in that statement, you can tell the plugin that there's a new variable. You get uh, hotkeys for the relationship graph on Mac, so you can directly uh, do the alignment with, with keys. And we have a lot of tooltips to show you the field value and the comment uh, in the script workspace or in the calculation. We also got some things for Windows. We have a field to search the relationship graph on Windows. We got an example file to help you search a script. And we have a snippet database so you can store snippets for uh, copying later into a new script. For macOS, we got a format button for calculations. So if you have a calculation like this one and you don't like how it's layout, you can use the format button to get something more like this. Then I spent a lot of time localizing all the dialogues in the plugin. So uh, you see here is a German and a Swedish and what's it? Maybe Spanish or what? Um, so I localized the plugin into 12 languages. So I hope you like it. Then we have the idea uh, to maybe use uh, the Saxon library into uh, on the MBS plugin. I'm not sure if any one of you does a lot of XML processing. It's a commercial XML library which can do XLST2, XLST3, XPath3, uh, it can do schema aware uh, X -query queries. Um, yeah, it can do a lot of things and I'm interested to learn if anyone is interested in getting this into FileMaker to get some better XML support because it's a commercial library. We, I would have to license it and it's quite expensive so I would only do it if I find enough people uh, who like to have this feature. Then we have more information on the website. Yeah, we got a website, we got documentation, 7,500 HTML files, 
one for each function. We got a lot of videos on the website, a blog posts where uh, well, we show you how to use some things. Then uh, there's a conference offer. If anyone doesn't have a license yet, there's a coupon code FileMaker Conference, so you can get a license with a discount. And regularly, I'm going to uh, the FileMaker training live stream to um, talk about the plugin. There are already over 60 videos available on YouTube for you to watch. <coughs> and if you like, you can join the live stream by uh, going to the um, YouTube and see it live. And then write questions into the comments there. And uh, we can answer your question maybe live in the live stream. Like on Friday, there's the one about the new plugin version. So that's it. Thank you for coming. And I think I'm over my time already.